The situation is becoming increasingly serious as Captain Ibrahim Trahore finds himself on the verge of potential assassination, a development unprecedented in Africa. The Western powers could never have anticipated an African leader rising against them to limit their influence and challenge their presence. Recently, Burkina Faso's President Ibrahim Trahore openly declared a battle against the Western powers making agreements that directly threaten their interests. These actions serve as a significant threshold for the West, where crossing it could result in the replacement or assassination of any African leader. However, Ibrahim Traoré surprised the West by doing something they did not expect, rendering their assassination plots ineffective. So, what exactly did Ibrahim Traoré do? Let's delve into the details in this video. In his tenure as the military leader who assumed power in Burkina Faso in 2022, Captain Ibrahim Trahore has profoundly transformed the country's relationship with the West, particularly France, through his actions and statements. Prior to Trahore's leadership, Burkina Faso, like many former French colonies, grappled with the complex legacy of colonialism. Many citizens perceived France as maintaining a neocolonial influence interfering in internal affairs, and hindering the country's development. This sentiment fueled Trahore's determination to sever ties with France and assert Burkina Faso's autonomy. Moreover, Ibrahim Trahore and many Burkina citizens hold the belief that Western-backed solutions to challenges such as terrorism and poverty have proven ineffective. This disillusionment with Western interventionism has fueled a desire for alternative approaches, including forging closer ties with non-Western powers like Russia. Additionally, a growing sense of pan-Africanism across the continent has further fueled Trahore's grand plans, emphasizing African unity, self-reliance, and rejecting external intervention. By challenging the status quo and defying the expectations set by the Western powers, Ibrahim Trahore has not only reached the threshold that the West sought to prevent African leaders from crossing, but also surpassed it, leaving the West frustrated by his ingenious tactics. Captain Ibrahim Trahore recognized that removing France from Burkina Faso required consolidating support and power. Challenging a deeply rooted influence demanded significant strength and rejection. To achieve this, Trahore embarked on a secret mission discreetly removing French officials to keep foreign powers in the dark about his future plans. By reducing their presence, he aimed to minimize the chances of sabotage. His display of power began with expelling the French ambassador and suspending cooperation and long-standing ties with France. He also limited the spread of French media propaganda under the guise of journalism. Additionally, Traoré openly voiced his opposition to Western countries and their interference in Burkina Faso. Under Traoré's leadership, Burkina Faso witnessed a significant shift in its foreign policy towards Russia. This change represented historical grievances, current political realities, and strategic considerations on both sides. The transformation was driven by deep-seated distrust towards Western powers and the pursuit of alternative partnerships. It presents both opportunities and challenges for Burkina Faso's future and the broader region. Burkina Faso's grievances with the West stem from a legacy of colonialism and neo-colonial practices. French interventions in regional conflicts were often viewed as ineffective and detrimental to local interests, further eroding trust and fueling the search for new allies. This sentiment created an environment in which Russia eager to expand its influence and challenge Western dominance in Africa, found an opportunity. In response, Western countries deployed the Wagner Group in Africa, spreading propaganda that they were responsible for murders. However, the presence of Western troops in African countries exposed the hypocrisy of such claims. For Russia, Burkina Faso represents a valuable partner in its quest for greater global influence and as a counterweight to Western hegemony. The country's strategic location and abundant natural resources make it an attractive ally. Through military and economic assistance, 
Russia aims to establish a foothold in the region and position itself as a key player in African affairs. The Russia-Burkina Faso partnership has materialized in various ways, with Russia becoming the primary supplier of military equipment and weapons, filling the void left by France's withdrawal. This critical support has significantly bolstered Burkina Faso's counter-terrorism capabilities and solidified its ties with Russia. While France intended to deprive Burkina Faso of weapons and increase terrorism, Russia prevented that scenario, thwarting the Western tactic of creating conflicts and then offering assistance. Furthermore, Burkina Faso sought to diversify its economic partnerships, turning to Russia for assistance. Burkina Faso has signed deals in mining, energy exploration, and infrastructure development, providing a lifeline to its struggling economy and laying the foundation for future collaborations. These agreements have brought a powerful ally to Burkina Faso in the form of Russia. Russia has emerged as a vocal defender of the Burkina Faso government on the international stage, shielding it from criticism and potential sanctions. This unwavering support has strengthened President Ibrahim Traor's legitimacy and elevated his global standing. It is important to note that President Vladimir Putin's personal backing has played a significant role in consolidating Traoré's power. Putin's recognition, diplomatic support, and provision of military and economic assistance have helped solidify Traoré's hold on the military, a crucial power base, and establish him as a prominent figure domestically and internationally. Initially, Traoré sought someone to support him in challenging Western powers. However, after consolidating his forces, Traoré has become one of the most powerful figures in Africa, reducing his dependence on Russia. The rise of Captain Ibrahim Traoré to power in Burkina Faso in 2022 has led to a notable shift in the country's foreign policy, with a clear inclination towards Russia. This shift is driven by Traoré's desire to have allies who can genuinely assist Burkina Faso rather than exploit it. In return, Burkina Faso offers Russia something it never had before, legitimacy from an African nation. An important and groundbreaking statement made by Captain Ibrahim Traoré was the full support of the people of Burkina Faso for Russia's military operation in Ukraine. This statement surprised Western countries, including the United States. It was an open announcement of a battle against the Western ideologies shaping Africa. Ibrahim Traoré explicitly hinted in his statements that the West should stop expecting that what it thinks is wrong would be wrong for Africa too. That's what Nelson Mandela said, which later became one of the most famous statements. He had said that the West should stop thinking that its enemies would be the enemies of every country on the planet. Now, Traoré manifests Nelson Mandela's statement, showing the West that he does not care about what they think. He will do whatever is right for his own country. Gone are the days when African countries had to first ask for the Western countries' permission to make foreign policies. President Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso is expressing a fundamental shift in African foreign policy. His statement signals a call to break away from historical norms influenced by colonial perspectives, where African nations were often assumed to automatically share the interests and adversaries of the West. President Traoré emphasizes the necessity for African countries, including Burkina Faso, to shape their foreign relations based on their unique geopolitical, economic, and security considerations. This stands in contrast to automatically aligning with the adversaries perceived by Western powers. President Ibrahim Traoré is promoting a more independent and region-specific approach to foreign affairs by advocating for a departure from colonial-era mentalities. He stressed the significance of African nations determining their own enemies and allies based on their national interests, regional dynamics, and global geopolitical realities. This approach challenges the assumption that what is considered detrimental to the West must inherently harm Africa, fostering a more subtle and self-reliant understanding of international relations. This has never been done in the past. If an African leader were to advocate such an idea, he would be assassinated instantly. 
Trahare not only presented the idea, but also put it into action. He startled the West by announcing the continuation of diplomatic relations with North Korea, which has been the West's biggest enemy for years. The relationship between Burkina Faso and North Korea has fluctuated depending on the loyalty of the Burkina leader in power. In the early years, North Korea provided Burkina Faso with limited agricultural and technical support, laying the foundation for a deep association based on shared ideological principles. A significant moment occurred in 1983 when Captain Thomas Sankara, a Marxist revolutionary, assumed leadership in Burkina Faso. Sankara recognized North Korea's socialist system as a kindred spirit and formalized diplomatic ties, leading to a close partnership characterized by military collaboration. Sankara visited North Korea twice, first as prime minister and later as president. The establishment of friendship association symbolized the deepening cultural and ideological connection. Despite Sankara's assassination in 1987, his successor, Blaise Compahare, initially maintained close ties with North Korea. Compahare's visit to Pyongyang in 1988 affirmed his commitment to the partnership. However, a turning point occurred in 2009 when Burkina Faso, as a temporary member of the UN Security Council, voted in favor of Resolution 1874, imposing additional sanctions on North Korea. This shift in alignment was influenced by Western powers, as Kampari was implicated in Sankara's assassination. Experts believe that one of the reasons for the assassination of Thomas Sankara by Western powers was his growing collaboration with North Korea. However, it's important to note that at that time, North Korea was not considered a greater threat to the Western powers than it is now. Despite this, Captain Ibrahim Trahore has moved closer to North Korea, initiating a battle against the West. In 2017, Burkina Faso severed diplomatic ties with North Korea due to Western pressure and UN resolutions, resulting in a significant estrangement between the two nations. However, after a six-year break, Burkina Faso and North Korea declared the restoration of diplomatic relations on March 30, 2023. Burkina Faso, facing an escalating terrorist threat, envisions collaboration with North Korea to strengthen its military capabilities. Additionally, it aims to assert greater independence in its foreign policy by cultivating relationships beyond traditional Western allies. The agreements between Burkina Faso and North Korea encompass potential collaboration in various fields, including mining, healthcare, agriculture, and research. North Korea's expertise in weapons development and military training presents an opportunity for collaboration in counterterrorism efforts. However, Burkina Faso's interest in purchasing weapons from North Korea could potentially violate UN sanctions, leading to economic repercussions and diplomatic isolation. Nonetheless, Ibrahim Traharaid does not prioritize compliance with sanctions that bring losses to his country. This introduces a tricky situation. It is well known that North Korea is famous for developing nuclear weapons and has declared itself as a nuclear power. This raises the possibility that Burkina Faso may also seek nuclear technology or expertise. Becoming a nuclear power would increase Burkina Faso's independence, as the West would no longer be able to dictate or blackmail the country, as seen in the case of North Korea which continues to do business despite heavy sanctions imposed by the West. This idea unlocks various opportunities for African countries, allowing them to benefit beyond the limitations imposed by the West. In essence, it signifies the complete liberation of African nations, freeing them from Western influence. If this occurs, Western countries will no longer have access to African land for exploitation and prosperity. The recent alignment of Burkina Faso with Russia under the leadership of Captain Ibrahim Trahare has sparked intense speculation. Some believe that this move could initiate a ripple effect across Africa, ushering in a new era dominated by Russia and potentially overshadowing Western influence in the region. 
Burkina Faso possesses qualities that could position it as a significant player in this scenario. Located in the heart of West Africa and sharing borders with key nations like Mali and Niger, Burkina Faso holds a strategic position that could become a focal point for geopolitical shifts. Its abundant mineral resources, particularly gold and manganese, make it appealing to Russia and provide leverage for strengthening economic and political ties. The ongoing struggle against terrorism also creates an environment conducive to Russian military assistance and deeper security cooperation. The convergence of these factors positions Burkina Faso as a potential catalyst for change, projecting its pro-Russian stance outward and attracting other disillusioned African nations. If Burkina Faso successfully partners with Russia, it could serve as a beacon, drawing other African countries disappointed with the West into Russia's sphere of influence. This could trigger a domino effect, significantly diminishing Western influence and reshaping the geopolitical landscape of the region. Such a shift would have far-reaching consequences, potentially reducing Western leverage on concepts like democracy, human rights, and good governance, while intensifying competition. Now this scenario has become a reality as Captain Ibrahim Trahare has reached a critical stage and is on the verge of surpassing it. The proposals for a confederation involving Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have fueled speculation about the formation of a regional bloc aligned with Russia. The aim of this proposal is to achieve increased economic and political integration, potentially serving as a model for other African nations. The plan to establish a confederation among Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso represents a pioneering initiative that challenges conventional ideas of regional cooperation. It seeks to forge a new paradigm for African unity, surpassing the limitations of existing regional entities like the African Union. The aspiration is to create a strong continent-wide confederation that can transform Africa into a strategic and economic powerhouse on the global stage. Currently, discussions regarding the creation of a confederation are taking place between Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. However, if Captain Ibrahim's plans continue to progress as they have thus far, this confederation could expand to encompass the entire continent. The envisioned confederation aims to foster collective identity and unity among African nations, emphasizing a shared sense of belonging to a larger entity, Africa. Similar to the concept of the United States of Africa, all African countries would be united as a single entity rather than separate nations. This goes beyond mere regional affiliations, envisioning a unified continent that transcends historical divisions. Unlike current regional alliances, this ambitious plan aims to unite all African countries, leveraging collective resources, expertise, and influence to effectively address global challenges and capitalize on opportunities. Integral to the proposed confederation is the establishment of robust legal and institutional frameworks. Agreements would bind all African countries to the confederation, providing a solid foundation for shared governance, economic policies, and strategic initiatives. The confederation is seen as a symbol of African sovereignty and self-determination, challenging the historical narrative shaped by external influences. Through this confederation, African nations aspire to exert greater influence in global affairs, possessing a stronger diplomatic voice to actively participate in shaping international policies, addressing global challenges, and fostering mutually beneficial partnerships. The proposal aims to overcome the limitations of regionalism by uniting the entire continent, creating a more inclusive and comprehensive entity that represents the diverse interests and aspirations of all African nations. This is where the significance of Ibrahim Traoré as the greatest resistance against the West in Africa becomes apparent. Captain Traoré's alignment with Russia, North Korea, and China marks a strategic departure from traditional alliances, presenting an opportunity to reshape the geopolitical landscape. These partnerships are seen as a means to diversify alliances decrease reliance on Western powers, 
and assert greater autonomy in international affairs for the benefit of African nations. After securing this, the proposed creation of a Pan-African Confederation adds a positive dimension to Ibrahim Traoré's geopolitical strategy. If successful, this confederation could transform power dynamics within Africa, fostering regional cooperation and potentially providing a counterbalance to Western influence on the continent. The open declaration of a battle against Western countries invites an exploration of Ibrahim Traoré's motivations. Possible factors include addressing historical injustices, economic disparities, and a desire to challenge what he perceives as an imbalanced global order. Ideological, economic, and strategic considerations may be driving his assertive stance in favor of Africa's self-determination. It is now evident that Ibrahim Traoré has undertaken actions that have proven fatal for African leaders in the past. However, he remains safe due to his powerful friends and the country's allies. Western powers are unlikely to attempt the assassination of Ibrahim Traoré because of the deterrent effect of his influential allies, specifically Vladimir Putin of Russia and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Ibrahim Traoré's strategic partnerships with Putin and Kim Jong-un serve as vital deterrents due to shared interests. Any harm to Ibrahim Traoré could be seen as a challenge to the leadership of Russia and North Korea. The fear of jeopardizing these alliances prevents Western powers from taking extreme measures against him. Both Putin and Kim Jong-un are known for their assertive and retaliatory foreign policies, suggesting that harm to Ibrahim Traoré could provoke a swift and forceful response from these leaders. Recognizing the potential consequences, Western powers may be discouraged from taking drastic actions, fearing the geopolitical repercussions. Beyond military responses, economic sanctions, diplomatic isolation, and other forms of retaliation could be deployed, impacting the interests of Western powers. Additionally, any attempt on Traoré's life could be unfavorably viewed by the international community, potentially undermining the credibility and moral standing of Western powers. The script then poses questions about Ibrahim Traoré's ability to avoid coups and plots against him and whether his fate will be similar to that of revolutionary leaders like Thomas Sankara. It seeks the audience's thoughts on whether Ibrahim Traoré's intimidating tactics against the West are helpful.